Vanguard was released for the Atari 2600 in 1982. Based on the arcade game from a year earlier, you'll control a fighter ship that's sent into a cave inside an asteroid to take down space terrorists. Blasting your way through enemy ships in an effort to take down the terrorist leader who goes by the name of the Gond. You can fire in all directions, but you move slow as shit. When you hold your fire, that's when you can actually move around. The funny thing is, there are different ways to control this, and it all depends on where your difficulty switches are positioned. If they're both on A, then holding the button will fire and the joysticks will determine what direction you fire. Having the left switch on A and the right one on B is the same thing except the forward gun fires automatically. Having left on B and right on A, the joystick controls what direction you're firing and pressing the button stops firing. And having them both on B is the same thing except the forward gun fires automatically. Sounds pretty fucking confusing, doesn't it? Choose whichever method you're more comfortable with, but me personally, I prefer having the button fire. It just feels more natural to my gaming instincts to have the button do my firing. There are two ways to die. Either you get hit by a projectile or direct contact with an enemy, or running out of fuel. The fuel gauge is the red bar at the bottom of the screen that constantly decreases. Each time you kill an enemy, it'll boost up a bit. The fuel doesn't drain all that fast, so you're usually not in any danger of running out, as long as you're blasting shit. There's also an invincibility power-up. These blocks against the wall that read E will provide you with the temporary ability to crash head-on into anything without consequence, including the walls. There are both horizontal and vertical scrolling levels with different variations of design for each, so it's not the same old shit all throughout the game. There's also a decent variety of enemies. In the horizontal stages, you'll usually have to deal with these ships that fly around and shake sometimes. They don't shoot often, they usually just get in your way. These thinner ships do shoot back and sometimes lunge out at you, making them more of a threat. Both of these ships will usually team up on the horizontal stages, a flock of one and then the other. In the vertical scrolling levels, there are these round egg-shaped ships from Mark and Mindy, I guess. They shimmy back and forth, not firing anything, but it forces you to constantly fire in all directions. This other vertical level is more narrow. It has these saucers planted into the wall, these ghostly looking bastards, and some laser that blocks your path unless you destroy the device it's attached to. The best way is through this gap right here. Then there are these snake creatures that come from underneath, and for some reason, they give you points when they grab you. What the hell kind of enemy is this? They give you points? I guess I'll just keep running into them. Why did I die that time? Turns out they only cooperate with you three times, and from then on there, they kill you just like any other enemy. Then there are these arrows. Not much to talk about there, it's pretty straightforward. One thing about them though is that their explosions sustain quite a bit, so try not to stay directly in front of them. And then after that is the Gond. Just dodge the attacks that come from the side and shoot between the blocks at what appears to be a face. It's actually really easy. Each time you beat a stage, you'll see a map screen so you can see how close you're getting to the Gond. After defeating him, you'll start again but with a different map screen and a different assortment of the stages within. Unfortunately, there are no difficulty variations, but there is a two-player alternating mode in case you want to have a battle for points, or to see who gets farther in the game. The graphics are average and simple, but at least everything looks enough like what it's supposed to be, and the walls are colorful to keep the contrast of the plain gray background. More importantly, it's a fun shooter that does justice to its arcade counterpart. 